everybody, welcome back. Uh, my name is James Bromberger, this is LCA TV. We're doing some of the filler bits between the sessions here at Ernest Conf AU, trying to bring you some of the hallway track of what's going on. I'm very pleased to be joined right now by Mr. Kevin Vinson, in fact, Associate Professor Kevin Vinson, I should say, from the International Centre for Radio Astronomy. Kevin, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to LCA. Is this your first LCA, is it? Um, well, no, I did, did one years ago. Years ago? <laughs> haven't since. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Well, obviously with the opportunity of it being here in Perth, you're based here in Perth, as I know, That's right. it's very hard to pass this up, isn't it? It is indeed. Now, you are here today for one of the very special mini-conferences, I believe. Yes, I'm speaking at the Astro mini-conference, how people are using Linux within the astronomy community. And as being one of the, the biggest astronomy projects around, we use Linux very heavily. Absolutely. So, tell me, what are you using it for? Whereabouts has Linux been deployed um, in your projects? I'm working on the design for the Square Kilometre Array. Um, the group that I work with, part of the team that are de designing the science data processing. Now, this is the key component for a radio telescope. Most people think of telescopes, optics, lenses. No, radio telescopes don't work like that. They're actually an ICT telescope. We're going to need some serious supercomputing power. We think by the time this goes live in about 2019, we're going to need a supercomputer in the top 10 on the planet just to be able to process our data. Our image sizes are variable, depending on the science case. We could go anywhere from four terabytes up to 400 terabytes. One image from an eight hour observation. So these are huge. So we're starting to do a series of experiments now, which we're calling data challenges, where we're looking at how we can do that, what architectures are best suited for the type of processing we need to do. We'll have data coming in, streaming through, being processed, but we've got to achieve ingest speeds of around 4,000 gigabytes a second. That's one hell of a network interface card. That's a bloody big network <laughs> interface card, that's true. You know, we're going to need a pipe that big. Excellent. Just to get this data through. So we're going to be working with one of the local providers. Are we allowed to mention names? Uh, you can do if you wish. Um, Amazon. Yeah. Web services, who one of the few people who are able to provide us with the infrastructure we need to be able to do this kind of And we'll be working with them to take effectively take over a large chunk of a data center, throw massive amounts of data in, stream it, throw it out again, and try like beggary not to put anything to disk. <laughs> Going to disk for us is a bad thing. I mean, you can imagine the time it takes to read a 40 terabyte file is just too long for us. We need this to be processed in near real time. Yes. And the final data for us, yes, they'll go to disk. And they'll have to be federated, distributed, just like the Large Hadron Collider, where files are stored once locally, and then we have to push them out yeah. across the world. That's that whole, no, uh, uh, density zero, one, one two, three, two, three. That's right. As they tear out. Now, the structure of the SKA, there will be a data center here in Perth, yes. and there will be another one in South Africa. It was the um, the astronomy work is one observatory on two sites. Low frequency and survey work here, mid frequency work in South Africa. So two different data streams. But the survey work is the one that has the highest ingest speed for phase one, which is what we're looking at at the moment, sure. which is the 4,000 gigabytes a second. And that's here in Australia. And we've got to be able to process this data. So we use of, of, let's just look at Linux so far, so, I mean there's going to be a, a slew of open source projects that you're making use of, but looking at Linux so far, has, has there been any red flags that have come up with Linux? Anything that you've hit that's been a, an issue that you need to look for and work on? The, the biggest problems we're having are things like benchmarking, and we're having to go into the kernel to do the benchmarking that we need to do. Now fortunately, Linux, the, the latest version 2.3... Uh, 12 at the moment, 12? I think 13 is an RC8. I think it was an, the RC8 introduced this ability to actually tap into the kernel to do the benchmarking that you wow. need. Thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Your timing is perfect for us. We, we can now tap into that to be able to do it. Now what we'll be looking at is streams of information. So CentOS is our preferred core. So CentOS is dumping data into a screen. Massive network fabric, piping information, and then sharded output coming out each server, and we're talking probably tens if not hundreds of thousands of servers, yes. will have a GPU instance associated with it, so we move it from the shard into the Linux node, then through to the GPU card 
to be processed there. Because at the end of the day, what we're doing is floating point math. Yes. A hell of a lot of I think we were talking point. before previously about a single provision uh, floating point math. Well, we're, we're not that stressed about single precision double precision. Now, modern GPUs, it makes no difference. We can do double precision yes. if we really wanted to. But given the noise that we're looking at within the data, single precision is probably good enough to start with. But the, the engineers have this wonderful habit of making things better. So suddenly we might need to move to double precision <laughs> because they're actually able to resolve the data yes. to that level. And if we do, well, big deal, we'll just use that. So we'll be using things like OpenCL, yes. so we're not going to be tied to a GPU provider. We don't care. We just love the speed of these things. It's just the sheer number that we need for doing this. So that's, a, that's our first data challenge, which will start work well, we're starting the design this month. Yes. Hope to start talking to um, the guys at Amazon about using their infrastructure for this middle of next month. And then we have to tie it in with when data stages become available for commissioning that we might be able to tap into. I mean, we, we, we really are talking that type of scale, you know, a whole data center to be able to run this level of tech. Absolutely. But you know, on the upside, if we do this right, we may be able, in this project, to be able to move and process more data than any single project has ever done on the planet so far. It's all about scale, isn't it? And it's all about scale, but that's just now. You know, we have to think, by 2019, we've got to be doing 4,000 gigabytes a second, but that's only 10% of what the full SK8 will do. So we've got another two zeros to add on the end. <laughs> we've got another think zero to, to add on the end. Tom's challenge as well, to get that amount of bandwidth is oh. a transition problem. We're talking about the middle of the Mercer scenario, which is one of the most remotest places in the world. Yeah, I think you know off the top of your head the population yeah, density the there. Yeah, there's one milliperson per square kilometre. One milliperson. So for an area of 40,000 square kilometres, there are 114 people <laughs> living in that area. So it's quite remote we're talking about here to get that Basically. amount of activity going in there. Well, CSIRO have already put the fibre in the ground. We have enough fibre to cart terabytes of data from the Murchison down to Perth. Cost, lighting the fibre, of course, is what costs money. The yes. photo optics are the expensive part, so we've only got four fibres lit at the moment. That will slowly be ramping up as we move more and more. But at the moment, what's being run out there is the precursor of the power fibres. Yes. MWA, which is run out of Western Australia, so it's another ICRA project. The guys at the Curtain Node of ICRA run that. Brilliant piece of engineering. Disseminating information to New Zealand and um, MIT and Bolton, um, Massachusetts. So Boston, Massachusetts. Boston. That's it. Yes. Not Baltimore. Baltimore are the people I work. Well, MIT with. and Boston, they're, they're, they're both opposite sides of the river, aren't they? Yeah. So we've got the first part of that. We're, we're sustaining a nice, steady megabyte level. Next, we have to move up to gigabyte, gigabyte level. level. Then we have to move up to hundreds of gigabytes, and then thousands of gigabytes. But the ingest speed is literally what's coming in to our system. We then do the reduction, and we'll be, you know, we reduce that down to image sizes that are in the orders of hundreds of terabytes per day. But we're, we're talking for the first year of operation, phase one. There are 13 science projects that are going to be happening. Just one of them will record 425 exabytes of data. That's quite a hard run. <laughs> it, the, these are continuous surveys. Two continuous surveys of both 425 exabytes of data. The rest are you know, the tens and hundreds of exabytes, but those are the two big ones. Those we can reduce down, but we're still talking 300 petabytes of data for a year, a year's travel. Wow. It's a hell of a challenge. It is. Which is why we smile so much. You know, I was going to say, I, we're geeks, we're happy. I, there's a video of you actually talking about some of your data sizes on Vimeo, and it's one of the things that I, I talk to my colleagues about, and then I point them at the video, and I think it's the, the joy in your eye of having such an amazing project to work on. Oh, yeah. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. It, it's up there with a the Large Hadron Collider put for astronomy, and we're doing a hell of a lot of the work here in Australia. Which is lovely to see. Which for us is, is a great thing. Wonderful. Look, Kevin, I know you've got the Astronomy Mini Conference yes, to get to. I've got to go and Thank you ever so much <laughs> for your pleasure. time here. Great to see you and I'll catch you around. Ta-da. We'll be back with some more interviews probably during the lunch period, so we'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.